appreciate you joining us in the trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics, because you made a good choice today. Jimmy Burrow talks about Joe's injury, talks about uh, the ramifications of that, talks about the rehab that Joe is facing, talks about the Cincinnati Bengals and, and Jake Browning playing quarterback position as well as he played it uh, against the Jacksonville Jaguars and how he was with uh, Jake's parents in Cincinnati in the suite of Paycor Stadium and this flying against the Pittsburgh Steelers. A lot of good stuff from Jimmy Burrow as, al- as always. I think you're going to really like the time you spend with him. Welcome once again to In the Trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics. As always, here we are in our outstanding studios, and we have an outstanding guest, as always, and that is none other than the great Jimmy Burrow. What's going on, sir? How you be? Well, uh, happy holidays. I'm doing good, and uh, uh, it's always fun to, to come on, so uh, uh, kind of looking forward to it the last couple of days. Here we go. It's Thanksgiving. Hope you had a happy Thanksgiving, and here we go. I noticed your your Christmas tree in the background there. The holiday spirit is already uh, already upon us all. It you know, is. A lot, it, a lot it, to be thankful for, there's no doubt. Yeah, I mean, uh, our family's been blessed over the years uh, with a lot of different things and continue to be, and and uh, we are thankful and, and uh, uh, look forward to having uh, some family around for uh, for Christmas. So Jimmy, what can you uh, what can you tell us about the status of uh, of Joe after after successful surgery? Everybody has talked about how successful the surgery uh, went. What what's he looking at at this point in time? Do you think? Well, we were we were with him uh, uh, at the surgery, and and the doctor did think it it went extremely well, and uh, uh, so uh, you know it's a it's a it's a process to to rehab and 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 get it back, but uh, all indications are he should be back for sure for uh, for next season. He, as as people have seen from from the game the other night, he's got a big uh, uh, bandage or, or wrap on it, and so rehab is is somewhat limited now. So hopefully in the next few weeks he'll get that off and and the the real uh, rehab starts. So. Uh, uh, everybody's uh, on board with with the fact that uh, it did go well, and uh, it's it's uh, never easy, regardless of of what kind of surgery you have. But uh, you know he's been there, done that, and so we're we're confident that uh, his rehab is going to go well, and and he'll be back next year, just like always. He's he's amazing in in regard to that. I mean, he's he's as tough minded. Uh, human being as I think I've ever known, ever met anyway. Uh, and, and he just, once he focuses, boy, he's going to get it done. So I'm sure it, it's a specialist in this, in this particular area. Um, and it's glad that the surgery was done so quickly, so successfully. And the thing that's amazing about him though, is he's back right after <laughs> he, right after the surgery is done, as soon as he can possibly be back in that locker room, He's back in there playing cards with the guys at the card table, interacting, leading, you know, uh, a factor in meetings. Um, his football knowledge is second to none. He knows he can fill a role in that regard. Lou Anarumo has said it's unbelievable what he did for us at our defensive meetings, him going in there, giving a quarterback's perspective on things that he saw. He said he's one of a kind in that area. He, he really is. I mean, Joe is a – He's he's about he's all team all the time, isn't he? Yeah, he loves his teammates. Uh, you know, football and the Bengals. Uh, that's his life. That's his job. Uh, he takes it seriously, whether whether he's uh, injured or not. And and he knows uh, uh, to, to be around and 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 uh, be back in that locker room is is important to to him. And I think he knows that it's important to to. Uh, the coaches and 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 the team and and the organization too. So uh, you'd have to be hard pressed to keep him out of there. I, again, loves loves being around, loves football, uh, loves interacting with with uh, 
uh, with, with his team there and, and uh, uses it. He always finds it uh, something, an opportunity uh, in, in the, in the process when he's been injured to, to do something that, to get better. And uh, it sounds like uh, uh, that he's been sitting in on defensive meetings, which is a great thing. Uh, you can, you can see how Lou and, and the coaches are, are game planning, uh, uh, attacking an offense, uh, what they're looking for uh, to, to get tipped off on, on offense. And, and uh, I, I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for, for Joe to, to be in there and learn uh, on the opposite side of the ball. And uh, he enjoys those type things. You know, the, the, I think one of his uh, most impressive traits, he's got a bunch of traits that are impressive, but one of his most impressive is never gets too high never gets too low yeah. uh, during the course of a game, you know, when things are going exceptionally well, so even keel. And, and if things are going poorly, you know, it's like even keel there too, and going to handle adversity and overcome it and whatever. And it seems like that's exactly what he does in these type of situations. I mean, it's like, yeah. you know, a lot of people would go into this severe depression or whatever. Joe just is like, you know what? I'm going to deal with the hand I've been dealt and I'm going to make the best of it. And I'm not going to, not going to get too high or too low about anything life in general. I mean, the way he handles it all is very impressive. Well, he would tell you uh, that, that it, it's the NFL, uh, you know, part of his uh, or his job is to, to, to play quarterback and, and uh, the things that happen uh, it's a rough sport and, and those things do happen. So uh, instead of uh, just sitting around and, and, and dwelling on, on the negative and, uh, woe is me. Uh, uh, you know, he, he looks, as I said, for, for opportunities to, to get better and to, to, uh, to be back with those guys. Uh, he, he does a few more things uh, outside of football to, uh, because, you know, we've, we've all been injured or sick or whatever. And, and there is a tendency to, to get, get bored. So there, there's always things you look for, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to not be bored. And, you know, he has outside interests, not, not a lot, but he has a few. And, and uh, uh, that's why you see him at a UFC fight or something like that here and there, because uh, right. he, he likes uh, uh, those, those kind of things. And, and it does uh, uh, get his mind a little off of, of the injury and the rehab and, and not being uh, able to play. And, and, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, like you saw the other night, he's on the sidelines. He's interacting with with Jake and the coaches, and he's got his iPad like like he uh, always uh, does. And I think he takes uh, that particular role that he's playing very seriously, and he's willing to help any way he can. Yeah, it's it's like you know he's an additional uh, member of the coaching staff, you know, and it's organic. It's not like he's trying to trump you know, anybody or anything else. He's like, he said, you know, if Jake's got a question or he's got anything yeah. to talk to me about, he can talk to me. I'm not, Joe's not the type that pushes himself on anybody, but he's a resource that you got to take advantage of. And, and the whole thing's organic with the coaching staff and, and, uh, you know, Jake and everything. And it's, uh, you know, my understanding is everything is like working out extremely well yeah. from a communication standpoint there. And he's been, uh, uh, on board with Jake from, from way back before he even got hurt. He said, you know, Jake's is, is very capable of, of being a starting quarterback. He's uh, uh, he's, he's always told me that uh, Jake prepares well, uh, you know, he's got the, the team uh, behind him. And uh, 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 even after the, the Pittsburgh game, which, you know, didn't, didn't look great. The weather, uh, Joe was the first one to say, "Hey, uh, the weather was horrible." So that that played into to, to some of the things that that were happening that day. But even right. after that game, Joe uh, just said, "Hey, uh, I believe in in Jake, and we as a team believe in Jake, and and uh, things are going to be okay." Yeah, it's it's amazing uh, the game that he had on Monday Night Football. You know, in front of the world, like Zach Taylor said after the game, he he basically. Uh, lit the world up <laughs> uh he's one of seven quarterbacks in nfl history that has completed 86 percent or more of his passes while throwing for 350 yards drew Brees, rich gannon did it 
Chris Chandler did it, Vinny Testaverde, Peyton Manning, Jake Browning, and Lamar Jackson. Uh, that's that's yeah. pretty that's pretty in incredible when you think about man, you know, the second yeah. NFL start. It was it was one of those nights, you know. You just and I, I thought I thought the whole thing was was uh done so well i thought the game plan was outstanding i thought zach called his play calling was top shelf yeah. um and the execution of it was there and when you have all those components meshing man you can have a special game yeah jake uh, certainly uh, is getting a lot of the uh credit and deservedly so but that he would would be the first as as joe always does when when he has success to to credit the the old line and 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 his teammates and uh, it, it's really, it was really an amazing uh, accomplishment for, for the whole organization and, and uh, Zach and his coaching staff. And because uh, you go to, to Jacksonville and, and uh, uh, they're one of the better defenses, uh, uh, one of the better offenses. And, and you, you pretty much uh, uh, had, a, had control of that game uh, or close to it, the, the whole, the, for four quarters. Right. So, uh, everybody uh, had a hand in it, and from from the top of the organization all, all the way down, and and uh, it was fun to watch, and and uh, proud of those guys. You know, it's interesting. You like you like to have um, your quarterback, who's going to be the backup quarterback, have some common traits in terms of you know uh, from a player standpoint, but personality and all that was is a bigger plus. And I think Jake has some of the same type of things, Joe. Jake is very even keel. You know, he's not a guy that, you know, the high, the real big high, the real big low kind of guy. He he seems to have the same type of makeup and disposition. And I know they get along great. Um, and and he he's um he can understand things at at a very high level, like Joe. I mean, there's there's a lot of traits. That's the reason that they they liked him as the backup quarterback. There's some commonality there in terms of, you know, checking boxes and don't have to junk your offense and go to another one completely. And he's been there through the evolution process of the offense. There are a lot of, a lot of things there that, uh, you know, that everybody was excited about and it turned out to be the case. I think that's one of the reasons Joe's has been, has been confident in, in Jake from, from the start, uh, because maybe there are a lot of, a lot of similarities, um, uh, you know, Jake came from uh, from Washington, a winning program. I coached for seven years at Washington State. Went to graduate school at Washington State, so that's a big rival. But yep. uh, uh, they always do a great job there. Have for for years, and and uh, uh, they prepare quarterbacks well. Prepare a lot of guys to go in the NFL. So I think it's uh, uh, it's a credit to them that that Jake is is where he is. But uh, if if you're a backup. Uh, it's it's hard. So uh, everything indicates to me that that Jake's is listened. He's he's learned. He's he's practiced the the way you would you would hope uh, uh, anybody does. That's kind of waiting in the wings, and um, you, it it shows on the field. And yeah, the first game uh, was wasn't great, but but it was the first game. The weather was bad, and not to make excuses, but uh, the improvement that that Jake made, uh, to that second game is, is, uh, is, is great. Uh, as I said, I think, I think Joe, I think Zach and the team expected the, the growth that you saw and, uh, just happened to be in, in front of uh, millions on Monday night, uh, uh, television and in a game that, that right. we really needed to, to stay in the playoff hunt. Yeah. I mean, the timing couldn't have been, uh, couldn't have been better. It was interesting. Uh, during the Pittsburgh game, they showed multiple shots of, of you guys with uh, Jake's parents, and I know there were yeah. some friends, and everybody was in, uh, you know, in in the suite that uh, that that you have at, at at Paycor. What was that like interacting with uh, with with the Browns? Yeah. Well, that was the one of the first things that Joe said was he he wanted Jake's family uh, uh, to to have access to to our suite because nice. you know, we're really pretty filled up, but but a lot of a lot of uh, our friends and family from other parts of, of, uh, the country kind of, kind of bailed out, uh, after Joe got hurt. So, uh, that's what Joe wanted. And, and they were very appreciative. Uh, Robin and I said it, it was kind of nice to, to watch other people agonize other family <laughs> members agonize about, a, uh, the quarterback down on the field, but, uh, it was, 
it was it was fun to to be with them. It was fun to 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 watch and 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 then we did see uh, probably how we look at times. They were maybe a little more emotional than than Robin and I are in in that in that suite. But uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna do it again uh, this Sunday, and we're looking forward to it. That's awesome. Well, this Sunday it's interesting. Uh, the Indianapolis Colts, the 2018 Apple Cup. Sixth ranked, sixteenth uh, uh, ranked Washington against seventh ranked Washington State. The two quarterbacks, Jake Browning and Gardner Minshew, and uh, J- Jake's Washington Huskies beat uh, Washington State twenty eight to fifteen. Uh, so those two guys have gone against each other at the collegiate level in two thousand eighteen in, in a big football game in a big matchup, and here they go again in the National Football League. It's kind of ironic. Yeah, as I said, that's a huge rival rivalry. Uh, and and the the one thing, if if you check the history of those two schools, there's there's great quarterbacks at, at both of them. When I was coaching there, we had Mark Rippon, uh, yeah. Jack Thompson was there when I first got there. He was just yep. uh, wrapping up his career. Uh, Tim Rosenbaugh with the Cardinals, and uh, you you can look on the other side, and and there's there's all kind of quarterbacks uh, uh, for the Huskies too. Uh, uh, Drew Bledsoe, certainly from from Washington State. So, uh, but that's a big rivalry, and and I'm sure uh, those guys will look forward to it. The other kind of uh, tidbit of information: uh, one of my best friends in coaching is is Gus Bradley, the defensive coordinator yeah. uh, for the Colts. We we coached together. I was the defensive coordinator, and he was a linebacker coach when we were at North Dakota State. About Long it. story how he. Uh, I helped him get get into the NFL, and and uh, you know he's he's been awesome as a, as a head coach and and, def- and a linebacker coach, and then defensive coordinator. But we stay in touch. He he watched Joe as a as a, as a uh, little boy there in uh, Fargo for for a couple of years, and and some of his kids were were similar age. So uh, I'm hoping to get a chance to to see him uh, either Saturday night or Sunday. Well, I'll tell you, Gus Bradley now. Whew. He can he can get it done. Uh, his team defense has forty two quarterback sacks, second most in the NFL. They're sixth in sack per pass attempt. Uh, there have been two hundred fifty four yards and losses on those quarterback sacks. So hidden yards. I mean that's fourth most in the National Football League. All those yards that have been lost, and he's got four different players with five and a half sacks or more. So I mean it's not just a guy. It, he's <clears throat> He's creating pressure packages and getting guys, you know, in matchups that he wants, and he can get it done. You're right. That guy is a very talented defensive mind, isn't he? He's one of the best uh, there is and uh, uh, a lot of experience. We, we, had, we had a fun uh, couple years at uh, North Dakota State, and then I, uh, I came to Ohio University, and he took over the, the coordinator job. And uh, our, my relationship with Monty Kiffin – uh, I'd played for him at Nebraska and he was kind of looking for a quality control uh, guy at Tampa and, and uh, called me about uh, uh, another guy. And, and I said, the guy you should hire is, is Gus Bradley. And cause we were running the same defense as uh, coach Kiff and uh, the Tampa two and all that. And so I hooked him up with, uh, with coach Kiffin and, and the rest is, uh, is history, but uh, he's such a good person and, and a great coach. Um, I always uh, root for 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 the Colts in, in case it affects uh, uh, other, unless it affects you know where where the they are in the standings with the with the Bengals and uh, uh, looking forward to to watching how he defends uh, uh, Zach and and the offense and and as I said, hoping I can get a chance to see. Him. Well, you know, it's it's uh, we've talked about it before when when, um, when Joe's had incurred injury and and. Uh, it's it's sad because he's he was in such great shape. I mean, he was playing at such a high level in such great shape. Uh, and man, this to be taken away from him like it uh, like it was is 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 sad, really. But man, I I know he's going to attack the rehab, and he'll be throwing. What are they figuring? Maybe April he'll be able to throw a little bit, or is that a little early, I, Jimmy? I, I, you know, really, uh, I I don't know. I'm I'm sure that in Joe's mind is, is a, is a good uh, starting place, but uh, I don't think anybody really knows for sure. You, you, you know, you get the, uh, 
get the bandage uh, off here in a couple of weeks and, and uh, I'm uh, re -X ray it, do all the things, MRI and all that to see where they are. And, and, uh, but uh, I have seen the plan uh, for, for each week, each month. And, and so I'd say that's, they're hoping for that, but uh, it's, it's pretty well organized and documented how they want to uh, process this rehabilitation. So uh, 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 I'm confident that it's going to go good. Well, I'm sure he'll attack rehab like he attacks everything, and uh, he'll be an all-pro, uh, multiple-time yep. pro bowler rehab guy. There's no question about that. Well, he he uh, he, he takes it seriously, uh, just yeah. like he does if if he were playing. He takes the rehab seriously, and and uh, I I will say that uh, Matt Summers over there and and the 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 training staff for the of the Bengals are are awesome. Uh, uh, and, and, uh, you, you know, they, they know, uh, how, what they're doing and how they're going to do things. And, and, uh, so we're, we're, we couldn't be, uh, uh, any happier with the way they've been over the years and continue to be, and, and they're going to be by Joe's side, uh, every step of the way. Jimmy, as always appreciate your carbon time for us. Uh, and again, Happy holidays. Enjoy them with fam family and friends, sir. All right. Happy holidays. Uh, go, go Bengals, and uh, let's get another one on Sunday. Thanks, Jimmy. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.